Well, guys, you have got to love the Tories falling over themselves to let you know how bad immigration is and how they're going to save us from it. <laughs> Yeah, this is something these septic spots on the arse of humanity keep saying, despite them being as much to blame for it as Blair or Labour are. In fact, we've seen this year on year for over a decade until the Tories now realise their own voters hate them almost as much as they do Labour, and so we now have a flurry of articles and soundbites telling us yet again that they'll bring the numbers down. Bollocks. Obviously, they won't bring jack shit down, but to be honest, it's not even enough if they did lower the imports, because now I think we're past just shutting the borders. Actually, we've been past it for a while already, but now it's reached the point where we might actually need to send people home. This, it's got to be said, is not just illegal immigrants being sent home I'm talking about either, but also some legal ones along with them. Yeah, that might sound a bit harsh and all of that, but it's a problem politicians, of course, that can literally only be fixed one way. First, you start off with ending benefits, healthcare and everything else for illegals, criminals and the like. Then you deport all criminals, people who refuse to integrate or have expressed hatred towards the UK, its native population or its culture. And for any idiots out there, this doesn't include people who criticise the government since no politician is British by any stretch of the imagination or indeed your foreskin. In fact, criticising the parasitic elite is very pro-British because they're as anti this country and its culture as you can bloody get. Anyway, though, the illegals and anti-British scum you forcibly deport and remove their citizenship if they've got it so that they're gone instantly. After that, it gets a bit trickier because forcing law-abiding or integrated migrants out of the country would be political suicide for a government that didn't have dictator levels of power. And when I say power, I literally mean Hitler or Stalin levels of power because under our system, the party you started trying to deport law-abiding migrants will lose the election without a bloody doubt. And those criminals are back on the streets, followed swiftly by you and me. This is because many of them law-abiding and integrated migrants will be colleagues, friends or even family members of Brits who the political parties want to vote for them and deporting their friends won't get their vote, will it? In fact, it would do the bloody opposite and reverse all the changes made as the legacy parties open the floodgates again once they get in. Unfortunately, the shit system we lives in means political parties have to be a broad church as they say, and so being extreme one way or the other never works out because you need the moderates who make up the majority to actually vote for ya. It's a small part of why the Tory party goes around claiming to be right-wing, but spouse left-wing bollocks like it's going out of fashion. Of course, the government trying to deport as many as they could would have other routes available to them in order to either send people home or encourage them to leave themselves. First off, they could refuse to renew any visas given out in the last five years, which means if you wasn't here before 2018, then your visa expires and home you go. Stopping the education visa scam that sees old families come over here and stay would be part of that as well, as would all or most education visas being stopped dead flat. Then you could offer immigrants who live here an incentive to go back home if they choose to, which would bring the numbers down again, but by how much is anyone's guess on that? After then, you should only be left with migrants who like this country, accept its culture and respect the people enough to want to take part in their society. That outside of dictator powers that wouldn't be great for Brits, let alone foreigners, is about the most you could really do because decades of political scumbags have literally fucked it up for us. Of course, even this limited plan of action I'm saying here would benefit the country in almost every way as house prices drop, public services become functional again and quality of life goes up with it, like going back to the 90s or something. Then the only time the borders are to be opened up is when we need people to come in to train Brits to do a job we don't have before they return home with our gratitude and a decent payment for doing it, you know how it used to be done. Obviously the government would also need to stop handing out British citizenship like it's a fucking smarty because the term's got zero meaning anymore. This used to mean you had ancestral connections to this country but now can include someone born in a Middle Eastern dust bowl or Timbuk fucking two that don't even speak a word of bloody English. Speak English to me, Tony. I thought this country spawned a fucking language, and so far nobody seems to speak it. But to finish off this rant, it's got to be said that the commie conservative fuckpicks can talk as much shit about them stopping immigration as they like, because anyone with half a brain cell can see they're more to blame for immigration than the bloody immigrants are themselves. Them alongside Labour have put this country in a fucking shit spot, and the only way out of it that I can actually see, as I said, wouldn't be bloody good for us. It's a shame trees and laws were never made to protect the public, but instead to protect the bloody crown, because all of these lots should be arrested under them.
pandemic. Where are 